Hi, everybody. Uh, here we are. Welcome to my dining room. <laughs> um, we'll try virtual scribal night uh, number one. Can everybody hear me okay? Are we good? Sort of. Hi. <laughs> cool. I guess we're good. Um, this is going to be kind of weird because I'm just going to sit here and talk to a video camera and paint things and um, yeah, come and paint along. Oh, Lilu, you can't see anything. Um, so technical stuff. We're streaming to Twitch. So um, you'll have to have the Twitch link up to, okay, good. You can all hear me. Um, uh, you shouldn't have to log into it. Or if you have a login, that's great because you can chat over there. Um, Oh, my husband is here too. He's going to be typing things and making sure that I don't miss any important messages. Uh, they're all important because you are all important or important and I love you all. Uh, anyway, um, so yeah, Twitch is where the video is happening. Um, so if you can watch Twitch, if you don't have a Twitch account, you can comment and uh, type on Discord. Otherwise, you can also type in Twitch if you have an account. So. We'll get that kind of going. Um, yeah, hopefully everybody's doing well in their various states of quarantine. Uh, yeah, fun stuff. Um, Brave New World. But we have paint and we have brushes and we have a lovely little bookmark that will be trying to make, everybody was able to get the um, uh, little how-to or class list that I posted, hopefully. Um, so we'll just sort of dive in, I guess. Um, so first off, we've got the, I've got the, the outline here. I don't know if we can see that or if that's gonna help. Well, anyway. Um, that's a little thing. So first thing we'll need uh, are the yellow ochre and your um, imitation gold um, to do the background color. Um, what's nice about the British Library Online site, if those of you who haven't used it before maybe, um, you can zoom in and I like to keep it up while I'm working here because you can zoom way in and see all the lovely little details um, of the manuscript. And then zoom back out because it works weird on the tablet. Anyway, um, oh, and here we are. So we'll put that there. So you've got your imitation gold, which you won't need a whole lot of, and a yellow ochre to do the background color. Um, and you want to mix up enough. You don't need a whole lot because this is a small piece. And my yellow ochre is almost dried out. So we'll just squeeze a lot. So a little blop. Like that. There, and then just a little bit of gold to give it some sparkle. Um, if you have Naples yellow, you won't need to add any white to it. We will add a little bit of white to this just to lighten it because these two colors on their own um, come out a little darker than the background uh, color on the original. Um, so get those all mixed up together, nice and smooth. Um, the yellow and gold combo is for those who haven't done a lot of late period um, or the squash bug style, this is this is a uh, margin piece from the breviary, breviary nah, of uh, Isabel of Castile, um, 1497. So it's mid mid late ish period um, for SCA. Um, hi Audrey, hooray! Apprentice Prime and Droneberg. Hi, I don't know who you are, Droneberg. Oh, is that Paul? 
Is that Edmund? Anyway, the gold, gold yellow um, ochre background is, is a common one for uh, the late period squash bug, but there's blues, there's greens. I found a pink one once, there's red, so you don't have to stick to the gold color if you don't want to. Um, so there, we're mixed up, kind of heavy cream. I am going to add a little bit of white to this just to brighten it a bit. And I like using the pipette. I think Natalia taught me the pipette trick before I was just putting drops of water on my finger and making a mess, so that helps not make a mess. Hi, Gwen! Yay! There we go. That's a lighter ochre gold with some sparkle in it for the background. That looks about right. So, um, uh, uh, a lining tool, or a, um, I can't remember the actual name for these, I'm so bad. Um, anyway, lining tool. If you don't have one of these, they are really useful um, for doing nice straight lines. I have a little bitty ruler around here somewhere. Where'd my little bitty ruler go? I don't know. Look, big ruler. Um, so basically what you do with these, I'm going to drop the art table, which could get interesting, but can we still see? Yes, we can still see. So to do with the lining tool, since I spill my paint all over the place, but that's good. I've got a little bit now that we can use for the shadows later. So that, you know, me being klutzy is not always a bad thing. Anyway, um, so if you're right-handed, you want to make sure you load the correct side of this, otherwise you get paint all over the place. So load up your, your mixing brush and just put a little bit right in the, right in the tool there. Test it on the edge of your paper and get the paint flowing. So that looks good right there. And then get it lined up. And we're going to do the border of the piece because this will do a little um, a bumper basically so you don't flow paint all over your paper and it keeps nice straight edges. Make sure you don't put your ruler down in the middle of the wet paint like I like to do because it makes a mess. My usual scribal students um, are used to my prattling. Um, everybody else, welcome to Malagentian Scribal Night where irreverency is king or queen, if you like. Uh, <laughs> We paint things, it's good. So there's a nice clean outline. We'll rinse the lining tool off and put the desk back up. There. Lovely outlines, everybody with me? Yes, we paint and we talk. That's what we do. And no sparkle. That's okay. Um, with whatever brush you like, we're going to fill in the background here. Um, I tried it with a number two and was irritated beyond belief uh, because it's tiny for this. Um, so I've got a number four um, liner brush. You can use a four round, anything that's got a, a nice point to it. Um, glove to protect the hand or protect the paper from the hand really. I don't care about the hand. And just start at one corner. I subscribe to the pushing puddles method 
of gouache painting. Um, so you're not actually brushing much on the paper itself. Your, your bristles don't come much in contact with the paper. Um, you basically put a blob of paint down and, and just sort of move it around. Um, and by these means, we shall have a lovely background. Did we get, Lilu, are you, did you get, uh, can you see now? Did we get you on Twitch? I hope. And I've moved my ot light. I think I like where we put the ot light, Josh. <laughs> it's working. There's no weird shadows and no glare, and it's lovely. So ot lights, mine's about 15 years old, and I'm sure there's better ones out there. But ot lights are lovely for being able to see true colors. I'm going to add a little bit more water to this. get some better flow. And when you're using metallics, um, you have to mix fairly frequently, otherwise your little mica bits all settle to the bottom. That's better. Nice even coverage, moving the puddle around. And as it dries, we should get a lovely little shine. And this is a better color than I mixed for the test piece yesterday. Yesterday I added a little bit of red, and a little bit of red goes a long way. This is pretty close to the color of the background in the original, which is great. Um, don't worry about if you go inside the lines a bit. Paint covers paint for the most part. Um, geranium red, which is what I tend to use, is a little bit more translucent than say carmine um, or a pure red, uh, but you get this lovely glow with it because it is slightly translucent. Um, and then of course there's alizarin crimson, which is a favorite, but not appropriate for this particular piece. There's a little bit too much blue in it to get the right um, shade for these cute little pink berries. I don't know what they are, but they're cute. Um, and this is the tedious part, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Odd light is best light, yes. Now Isabella of Castile, is that, she was queen when Columbus went to uh, America, right? Is that the Queen Isabella? Is that the right one? I don't even know. I'm a bad Scadian and I don't do history a whole lot. I like to play with swords and paint things, so. It works. Other people who are more versed in history, teach me stuff. <laughs> Ruling pen. Yes, there we go. I'm catching up on the on the Twitch conversation here. I had it written down on the class notes, but I don't have them in front of me. So y'all just get to go along with my ramblings and just like being in class, right? Maybe. Okay. Yeah. So yes, this is this is Queen Isabella of Spain who sent Columbus to the New World and here we all are because of him. Oh boy. Uh, she had lovely books though. So on the color mixing I'm just doing it one 
at a time tonight. We'll do the blue and the green, and well, probably the green and then the blue. We'll get the vines and the stems in next after this has had a chance to dry. Um, sometimes I'll mix all the colors for the entire scroll if I have a plan, which often I don't. Oh, ruling pens on sale. Fabulous. Everybody should get a ruling pen. They're wonderful. Don't get the $3.99 ones from Amazon. Spend the 13 bucks or whatever it is from John Neal uh, because they'll actually work. Um, we've tried a few $3.99 from Amazon and the tips don't actually meet and you don't get lines, you get blobs. So we like nice lines. Hi, Cody. Um, oh, the consistency of the gouache. Uh, you want, uh, most people say heavy cream. I say melted ice cream because I have no idea what heavy cream looks like, but I know what melted ice cream looks like. Um, so pretty much you want it to, you want it to flow without being runny. Um, You want to be able to push it around some, and like I can see a few places here where I may have gotten a little thin. Um, you'll be able to tell if it's too thin because you can see the paper through it. Um, I don't know how well this comes through on the video, but as you, if you blob it on the paper, and so, okay. One, blobbing it on the paper. Great for Bristol. Um, you know, the surface tension of the gouache and the water it holds itself together fairly well. Um, and with the Bristol is great because it's a porous paper and your paint will dry from both the top and a little bit from the bottom. Um, so it stays fairly smooth and not curly, unlike the pergamonata, which I had taped down on the top and the bottom um, when I did the test piece on Tuesday and the silly thing still curled um, because perg is such a smooth um, parchment. It's not um, the way it's put together. It, it doesn't allow air movement through the paper. So the the upper layer gets wet and curls as it dries and then you have to flatten it and swear at it a lot. And not that I do that, I do. Um, so you have to mix your paint a little bit drier when you're working on perg. And another way to avoid the curling is not to do large areas, but you can decide for yourself what a large area is and your perg, and not, perg may uh, agree with you or not. Um, and, uh, you know, smaller pieces with not a lot of background color, like from the Mira Calligraphy Monumenta, the lovely, lovely late, late period piece. Um, the model book of calligraphy is is what it uh, translates to. Um, Yoris and I can't remember his brother's name. The Hof Hofnangel, however that's pronounced, brothers um, did a a model book of calligraphy. Just phrases, paragraphs from um, whatever, and they they. Uh, you know, different hands. Every every page in it has a different calligraphic hand. Some of them are backwards. It's nuts. Um, and then they, someone else came around um, about 50 years later and put wonderful botanical illustrations in it um, with bugs and um, fruits and flowers and insects and frogs and critters. Um, very realistic, you know, uh, watercolor type illustrations. 
Am I missing anything on chat because I'm not paying attention to the chat? Impermeable parchment. Yes. Yeah, vellum will do the same thing to a lesser degree um, with the curling. Um, vellum, real animal vellum, I've found sucks up paint like nobody's business. Um, so sometimes you end up using more, but painting on actual vellum is wonderful. Uh, it just moves. The paint and the brushes move really well. Um, And it gets you closer to, you know, period scroll work, which is one of our goals besides making lovely things. How are we all doing on our backgrounds? Those of you that are painting, who's painting? And who's just listening to me talk? <laughs> And there we go. Yay, painting, Aloysius. And Eridan and Lisbeth and Magdalena. Hi, Magdalena. Oh, hi, Elsa. Hooray. Oh, good. This is like dinner and a show for some of you. Wonderful. <laughs> so I am set with my background. So I'll rinse that off. So that was, again, the background color here, and it's still a little dark, a little darker than the uh, source, but that is okay. Um, this is where painting swatches comes in too, and I hate painting swatches. I just go sometimes, uh, which is bad, bad Laurel. Um, <laughs> but, uh, it gives us all our own, you know, every, everybody will have, will have their own, um, unique piece. And yes, my apprentice wings it. That's my girl. <laughs> um, so background, uh, is done while I'm waiting to, for this to dry, you can still see maybe it's shiny. No, I'm looking at the monitor over here, but there's a little bit of shine on the paper where it's wet. Oh, there we go. Here. So that's drying. Um, to do the color for the shadows, this is where the burnt umber comes in. You just want the tiniest, tiniest bit. That might be just enough. Um, where I jogged the palette and spilled some. It spilled into the one right next to it, so that's good. But just a wee bitty bit in the wee bitty bit. Um, get some water on there. And mix in. Oh, I might need a, a wee bitty bit more. Because we don't want it to be too dark, but we do want it to be noticeably darker. Um, which that is not currently. So we'll try another wee bitty bit. And this is where your swatching would come in handy. Oh, oh, hi, Lilu. Hooray. Video good. Our foreign correspondent in Canada. Is that you, Lilu? I think. <laughs> Yay! Yes, okay, with your sexy, sexy paintbrush. <laughs> Trust me, it's a good thing. Um, so down here, 
in the corner of the page here. I'm just going to do a quick little quick little swatch of background color so we can test the shadow color and make sure it's not too dark or too light because I've mixed my paint nice and wet and the background on the main one is still drying. And you can all, well, was that blowing? Was it noisy? Was there a gale? No, okay, good. <laughs> Oh, drawing as you painted. I am bad at that. I have to have my graph paper and then I trace with a light table and then sometimes it comes out the way I think it is. Brush tiger. I do not understand brush tiger. Oh, my brush tiger. Yes. Yes. From, from apprentice number two, my special brush tiger. He's a good paintbrush holder. And and my my, my Tiberius uh, rinse water cup, because we love them with the brush rests and uh, lovely things. And uh, my wee yogurt container, uh, salted caramel looks like for the clean water for mixing, because I'm a little tweaky like that. So we won't need the large number four brush anymore, probably. And we'll be good with the number two round and the 20 aught liner uh, for the detail work. So there's my two colors of background and shadow and everything is taking a long time to dry, but that's all right. Hmm? <laughs> well, that's why I sent you the thing to trace Gwen and, but that's okay. <laughs> as long as it looks sort of like a flower, you know, or or whatever you want it to look like. Happy little trees. This is this is not really Bob Ross <laughs> at all. But are we having fun? I'm having fun. <laughs> I amuse myself. I hope I amuse you. So there we'll put the the darker color over the light and that looks about right so we'll keep the shadows um so for the background uh, again yeah, under 30 minutes no <laughs> no he doesn't do that it would be gauche yeah no no hair dryers please um yeah that kind of ruins the whole smoothness if you if you blow on it too hard you know, a warm room though, in low humidity, your gouache will definitely dry quicker, uh, sometimes too quick, quicker than you want it to. Um, so I like to end with the shadows because it's sort of the, the final, ooh, now it's done. Um, so next step in mixing will be the green for um, the stems and leaves, the couple little bitty leaves we have on here. Olive green is a good um, medium green, not too bright. Uh, can make it sort of minty if you add too much white. But we just need a little tiny blob, like so, because we don't have much for stems and leaves. And we'll want to grab a little blob of white and put it where we didn't spill all the green paint into our background color. That's fun. Um, but there's a little tiny drop of white right there. So we'll mix that. A little bit of water in the green. One drop in the white. Make sure your mixing brush is nicely rinsed. Get your green to the nice melted ice cream stage. And then load the mixing brush with about that much 
um, there's not a lot of green, and mix it in with your white. So you want sort of a, a medium shade. This is, I think is going to be too light, so we'll add another brush full of green here. It doesn't take a lot of color to change a white, and it doesn't take a lot of white to lighten a color. It's fascinating. So there's a nice light medium green leaf color. Put that, put him on the brush tiger. So with your number two round liner, yeah, greens are a pain. And greens, if you're doing large areas of green, they cover like crap. <laughs> I'm not gonna, <laughs> it's, it's a pain in the butt to get good green and good yellow coverage because they're streaky and terrible. Um, but little leaves and things, much easier. Smaller, smaller areas, um, much easier for almost everything. Uh, so up here, I'm not blocking the thing. Okay, uh, we'll just do a little green leaf. And a little green leaf. And this is less pushing puddles around and a little bit more brushing because it is smaller area. Um, you don't want to load up your brush with too much paint because you get blobs. And we don't like the blobs. No sploot. And this isn't going to be outlined per se. I like to say black outlines hide a multitude of sins, and they do. Um, but you don't have to be perfect on your lines because you can go back over them. You can fix paint with paint, especially when it's a full coverage piece like this. You know, if you if you jog the brush, which I do, uh, and go into your background, you just go back to your background color after everything is dry and paint over it. And as long as it's not too wet and doesn't re-wet the gouache underneath, um, you should be able to cover up your mistakes and no one will ever know unless you tell them. Don't ever tell them. Artist secrets. <laughs> and Audrey's figured out round things. <laughs> yes, pink berries are pretty much like pink pearls uh, with slightly different reflective qualities. Um, the berries are a little bit more matte than the pearls. They don't have, well, these particular ones uh, I noticed don't have the lower highlight um, like the pearls do often. Um, but that can be, you know, it all depends. If you have really shiny coffee berries, you may want to put a lower highlight in. So what's fun about the floral pieces here, the squash bug, um, what you have to pay attention to uh, is where the light is coming from. And almost always, I'm sure we can find an exception here and there, um, the light in medieval manuscripts is going to come from this direction, uh, left, upper left to lower right. It's you know, we read uh, left to right, and that's just sort of the natural look and flow. Because, I mean, sunrise, east, I don't know how, how they figured it out or why they figured it out. I'm sure it's, we read left to right, and that's uh, the way it is. If anybody else has theories, we should, uh, we can, we can discuss. 
Oh, she's examining my berries, my goodness. Yes, like when you mirror image the page and stump Grandpa Harold and confuse Laurel Camille. Uh, <laughs> because Audrey is sneaky sometimes. And I'm going to try and scoop out the green that went all over my... Don't open your paint tubes over your palette, kids. It's a bad time. Because then you get dark green in your nice gold background color and... If we can get most of it out, we're just going to mix the rest in and it'll be different. So that was fun. Don't do that. What I did. Do as I say, not as I do. Uh, <laughs> so there's that. So stems. Um, we'll put the shadow bit of the stems in. And again, looking at your, your source, light comes from upper... Uh, left, bottom, right. So your your left-hand side of things uh, are all going to be the brighter side, and your shadows are going to be towards the bottom. Um, so go back to your, your straight green. Um, in mixing colors, it's really easy to go lighter. A um, little bit harder to go darker. So if you can, and if it's appropriate, your straight out of the tube is almost always going to be your darkest shade because you don't have to worry about mixing it or matching um, to it. Um, adding white will lighten and then you have happy light colors that all match. Uh, so it's a simple line. This one is a fairly straightforward, you know, pretty much if it's on the bottom. It's your, your shadow. So we'll do one line along the bottom of the forget-me-not. And then work on the vine stem. And you can go into the stem a little bit too to give the, you know, um, the look of your little berry stems being connected to your central stem, but not necessarily right on the edge, because that's not how plants grow. They have they have different connections. Uh, so like so, I'm not blocking. Okay. I can see. And up like so. And this is where you can hide some of your bumps too. It's not a black outline, but it's still an outline. So if your hand maybe wasn't perfectly steady while you were filling in the stem, we can hide the ripples with a lovely shadow. Of course, if your hand wasn't steady during the stem, there's no guarantee it's going to be steady during the shadow, but that's just, that's a thing. Oh, yes, a four round is ginormous, but with the background, you don't want to do it with a one. You'll go crazy. I'll get the top here. And kind of cut in there. And... Okay, there's our green stems. Yeah, I don't know that I've used anything bigger than a four round. Uh, I have a six, but that's huge. I mean, relatively speaking. Um, 
Yeah, I've not used a flat brush. I just can't. It's nothing Carrie ever used, my my Laurel. Um, she was big on the, the round, round brushes, round, round, round. Um, so I just keep going. So blue will be next. We'll do the flowers. So get your ultramarine light is what I prefer. Um, ultramarine deep is what comes with the starter kits a lot of times. Um, but it's got, it's more purple than I tend to like. Um, appropriate for some periods, just like instead of, you know, geranium, you'd use flame red. Uh, so I'll put a little blob of white in there and a little blob in the middle. So we're doing three shades of blue. We'll keep the ultramarine light uh, for the, the details, you know, the, the highlights, or uh, shadows rather. And then we've got the lightest blue for the main part of the petal, and then there's, there's a shadow, you know, a, a, a texture shade in between. Um, mix up the ultramarine. And blue plus white equals fast color change. So, I'm gonna get most of it off the brush and mix what I think is going to be the lightest shade. And that looks pretty good. Actually, that's going to be our medium shade, so we're going to do that again. Get my palettes in the right order here. There's our lightest shade. And a little bit more blue. the medium shade and here is where we can test on the on the page again just to see swatch it but that is a lovely light blue it's lighter than the one I tested on Tuesday so I think we're I think we're there and I think we might need just a little more blue in the medium blue. Just a bit. Better. So don't be afraid of contrast uh, because people aren't going to be looking at it from six inches away. Some of us will. Um, but typically, especially for scrolls, um, they're going to be hanging on the wall and you'll see it from across the room. And if all your shades are too close together, it's just going to blend into one little blue dot and there, it won't have any depth to it. So don't be afraid to be a little bold. Not too bold, but be bold. Ah, so there's, that's a nicer contrast for the blue flower, and I like that a lot. Um, so, we'll start at the top one. So, depending on the size of the flower or the bird or whatever it is you're painting, um, flowers typically, I will do the whole thing you know, the, the background color on the whole thing, and then light layers um, for the for the shadows and highlights. Um, if it's a huge, huge, relatively speaking, huge piece, um, I will 
do, you know, I'll figure out where the color break needs to be just because I don't want to have 20 layers of paint in a large area. That'll make your perg buckle even faster. Um, but on little, little things like this, um, doing the whole thing and, and being able to sort of adjust on the fly where your, um, where your shadows are and where your highlights are is nice. Um, and again, if you go a little bit over, well, nature is not perfect. Flower petals are different shapes and they don't necessarily agree with where the background is sometimes. Get that next to And what we may do also, um, order of layers as far as leaves to petals. Um, sometimes you'll have to go back and put a little bit more green over the blue because your, your stems and leaves don't, you know, your petals will typically not be over the lower leaves on a flower. That's not how they grow. Um, so if you are, your goal is to be as realistic as possible, look at actual, you know, we have the benefit of photographs now that, that they did not, they had to go out and hope that something was blooming in the garden. Um, or you make it up. There's plenty of made up plants out there in manuscripts. Um, but a lot of them are definitely identifiable, um, which is great because then you can build your own medieval garden out of what was painted in a manuscript, so that could be fun. Uh, there's a whole other class. <laughs> um, but paying attention to the structure of flowers and how the petals all fit together and what grows over what in reality will help make your your late period floral illuminations all the more realistic. And this is great because I got into Scribal 12 years ago because um, I wanted to learn how to paint, but specifically I wanted to learn how to paint pretty flowers. Uh, and after 12 years, I finally feel like more often than not, not always, but more often than not, what I can see in my head is actually what comes out on the page, which is a really, really nice feeling <laughs> and, and a little strange. So, oh, um, how did we decide on the angle for the painting surface? Um, it's comfortable. Uh, I've painted flat and I end up with a stiff neck. Um, depending on what I'm doing, sometimes I'll have it up even a little further than this. Um, like I can see two here, a few spots that I kind of missed on the background. So we'll just kind of go in after this. Um, but it's whatever's comfortable really. And I think if we weren't, um, videoing here, I might have it up another click. But this was like a, I don't know, a $15 board from AC Moore. Uh, I got, um, somebody's going to have to go back through this video and count how many times I say, um, because <laughs> I think I'm saying it a lot. Oh, well. Um, anyway, yeah, this was a, like a $15 board and it has improved things greatly. Um, next step is an actual spot in the house. I need to clean my craft room um, to set up a more permanent 
Uh, <laughs> not it, Audrey. Okay. Yeah, you don't need to actually count because it's going to be a lot and I don't need to know. But we'll get a... One of these days I'll get an actual scribal set up. Oh, Josh is typing something which worries me. So there's the background done. Uh, looking at the flower in the source. I don't need a stream counter shush you. <laughs> the petals curl a bit and they're not just flat. They've got a, a shape to them. So starting with the lower or the, the right hand one and your medium blue to sort of do a, a shadow along the bottom third or so. And then the top of this one is curling over just a little bit. And again, at this point, you're not pushing puddles around. We're actually brushing onto the page. And if you can pull down little bitty uh, lines, that gets some of your your shading and you don't want a, a necessarily a, a perfect perfectly straight line because it will look painted and not like a flower which we're painting flowers but we're trying to paint realistic flowers and then this one is kind of like so Because again, your, your upper surfaces of your petals are going to be light colored and they're going to shade the lower ones. So I'll bring that along like that. It's going to look really funny. It always does until you get the white in there and then the white highlight just makes everything click and it's glorious. Um, so the lower Forget me not now. And start here with about the upper an upper third of the petal. A little bit of blur on the edge. And going over here, this is almost half. I did a much better job mixing blues tonight than I did on Tuesday. Uh, this is the first time I think I've ever painted the same thing twice. So that's fun. And then here, I've got all kinds of interesting line work like so. And there's a line going like that. And again, British Library, we love you because you can zoom right in and get up the manuscript's nose if it had a nose, which would be weird. there and the last one which kind of does like that and break up the edge okay so there is all the oh hello Kara oh And, and what, what did he get right? Do we want to know? <laughs> um, now we'll do the blue 
shadow or the, the, it's not a highlight, it's a low light. Words are not coming to me tonight. I'm very tired. I pruned 200 trees today. Maybe not 200, but it was a lot. Um, so liner brush. And since I've got the lower one still zoomed in, here's your outline and your your shadow there so there's that we have the little creases here right there and around and what we'll do with these if you look on the source it's actually kind of a purplish color um, so after we get this in once we get our red in the palette will actually go back over it and that will make it match a little better. And we have two lines there. Outside shadow comes almost to the edge. This comes down and around. And a couple inner lines like so. And as you get less paint on your brush, sometimes you can get really fine little lines like that. There. So there's, we're pretty much done with the blue. Get out your geranium and we'll mix pretty much the same way we just did the blue, three different shades. Keep the solid red as your darkest and then we'll go two steps down for a medium and a light. And these same colors are used all over this uh, manuscript also, and we're going to have all kinds of leftover paint, so go do more bookmarks when we're all done with this one because we've got the paint pre-mixed ready to go and you all have to post pictures of your finished ones um, somewhere I can see them because I want to have a gallery and it'll be glorious hmm? she says hi oh that I started with my lightest blue that's what you got good job yes yes always work I always work light well, no, I don't always work. It depends what I'm doing. Um, I guess there's really no rhyme or reason to how I start with light to dark. Usually I work light to dark and then save the highlight for last, but sometimes not. I don't know. Don't ask me what goes on in my brain. 60% of the time it's what I do every time. Yes. Exactly. He knows me. <laughs> Uh, so there's the red. We'll get not a lot on the brush and start maybe with the lightest. Yeah, that looks like a lightest. Lovely creamy pink for Kara if she's still watching. The pink girl. And then slightly more red for the medium tone. That might be too much red. No, nope, might be just enough. Let's see. Might need a little more. We'll find out. Nope, that actually, I'm going to say it's good. We'll do a, a test swatch. 
Oh, both of, oh, she squealed with delight. Yay, I make the Kara happy. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, and it's, you, you find out what works for you. Go with the flow. The paint is just paint. Paint over it if you don't like it. Simple. And what works fine one day may not work the next day because of the phase of the moon or um, the temperature of your water or whether the cat has jumped on it recently. Okay, he's still asleep. I'm surprised we haven't seen either of the cats yet. My board that switches. Oh, um, AC Moore, but they're out of uh, business now. Um, Michaels should have them. I can't remember what it's actually called. Uh, like an adjustable art board, I think. Um, it came with a T-square too, which was great. So any, any decent art store or even not a decent art store, craft store, um, will have something, you know, and if, I don't know what you have up there for art shops. We have artists and craftsmen down here. Um, you know, any, anything that sells art supplies, um, it's really, it's really nice. Um, I had one, um, that was just a fixed angle, uh, that was actually a little shallower than this. Um, and it was nice for small, um, small pieces. Uh, but doing larger, it's nice to have the extra space because I can put the tablet up there and whatever sources and scrap paper, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, Michaels, Michaels would probably be where I would try first. Um, I don't know what Desire is, uh, but if it's somewhere that sells paints, they should have they should have a something to paint on. Um, the red, yeah, the red is more a cherry red than a flame red. Like I say, this one is, the, the one I prefer is called geranium. Um, there's also in here, I don't have much. This is the little tiny five ounce, uh, or uh, yeah, five ounce, um, or milliliter, five milliliter uh, carmine, which is a little bit, it's got a little bit more blue in it. Um, but it would also work for this. Uh, also, alizarin crimson is a bit more on the purpley red. Um, and then I have cadmium red purple here, which has got cadmium in it, so I don't use it much. Um, but it's, it's a similar color. It's actually a little bit brighter than the geranium, I think but heavy metals are no fun for anybody, but they're gorgeous. Uh, so, did that answer questions? Yes, any other questions? Looking back through, yes, the cadmium will glow, uh, possibly radioactively if you're not careful. Don't lick your brushes or the scroll. Don't lick the scroll. So. Now that we've got our three shades of red, the upper berries are more mature, so they're a, a darker red. Um, start with those. And don't worry about getting them perfectly round. It's nature. Berries are one thing that, you know, if something was going to be perfect, they come pretty close, but they have weird bumps and lumps and dots and things. And there's a bubble in my paint. I hate bubbles in the paint. That's a pain. Hopefully it'll pop. Anyway, if you mix too vigorously, you get bubbles in your paint. So be careful. Kind of a pain. But it pops. There we go. So you outline and then fill in. We'll go back and forth with colors a bit here. But this is your base for the fruit. You 
And two more. So elsewhere in this book, there are uh, sweet peas and little pink daisies that use the same color pink. So you don't have to just paint berries over and over and over again, unless you like painting berries. Um, as, as Audrey observed, they're just like pearls. So after you've painted the berries, you will have a, a jump start on how to do pearls and other round things. There's our six little dark pink berries. Oh, uh-oh. Good night, Elsa. We'll post the video later. You'll be able to catch up. We've got the light pink now, so three little light pink berries coming at you. And there we go. Who's having a stroke? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Please don't have a stroke. You've had a rough enough week with medical things. How's your finger, Audrey? But yes, I had to yell at somebody once. He had his hand right smack in the middle of the calligraphy. It's like, don't do that. Please, please don't do that. Please. You have no idea what you're doing. I lost my white. So while we're waiting for that to dry, do a little blob of white. And I listed on the class notes sheet permanent white or titanium white. Um, that's the Bob Ross thing. Titanium white. Anyway, uh, because if you use zinc white, you will be sad. Um, zinc white is the white you use to make pigments um, more opaque without really lightening them. Um, so like the geranium, like I say, if we were just to paint with the geranium um, just as an example, it, it has, it's got this lovely, lovely glow on um, parchment and on, uh, I have no pencil here, uh, parchment and, and vellum. Um, but if there's anything behind it, you will see right through it. And like I, I, when I was a young scribe, I had marked with little G's and B's and R's, whether leaves on a, on a bar and ivy were, uh, gold, blue, or red. And the gold and the blue covered nicely, and then there were little R's in the background of all of my red leaves. And I've stopped doing that. <laughs> so, notes are good, just maybe not, uh, maybe not everywhere. Ah, yes, don't you get, get, uh, get permanent white or, or titanium white. They're the same, same thing. Um, I think Holbein calls it permanent white, and Winsor Newton may call it um, uh, titanium white. So there's another one out there too, and I can't remember what it is. Uh, but permanent white or, or zinc white. There's also the magic white, um, which needs to be shaken up again. Dr. P. H. Martin's bleed proof white, uh, which is the only thing I use for actual white work anymore because it's magic. Um, nice and opaque. I do thin it just a little bit because uh, it's a little bit thick straight out of the 
um, bottle for me. It is an ink, so you could in theory load it into a calligraphy pen and that would be your, your white ink for whatever. Um, but it it's wonderful for white work because you can do the lines and they don't get all streaky and translucent and then you swear at the page a lot. Uh, yeah, Dr. P.H. Martin. Amazon has it. Maybe someday we'll be able to get shipments from them without waiting three months. Um, yes, Black Scroll. That might be... We might try that for uh, for next month's uh, streaming Scribble if we're all still quarantined. Because uh, I haven't done one in a while and I'd like to again. And that's... You know, you want your nice opaque colors for that too. Yes, you do want to do all the styles because all the styles are fun. Uh, Woohoo! <laughs> Lilu, have you done black hours before? I've done one and it was terrifying because I couldn't draw on my graph paper because you don't really get to see through your black paper with a light table. It just doesn't work. Yes. Okay. So we'll talk. Well, I'll see if I can get something uh, small, maybe for next uh, next month or two weeks from now or sometime, and we'll see if we can do this again. Um, so now we're on highlights on the berries. Going back to the current scroll, um, your light pink is going to be your highlight for your dark pink berries. So again, just sort of, and these we're going to go back through with the small brush and do a little bit of, of back and forth. Um, so it's a little bit hard to see on the source one exactly how it works, but again, it's a round object. Um, picture a you know a shiny a pool ball or something you know your 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 lightest the light's going to hit the top first and the and the upper edge and then once you get around the curve it, it starts going more into shadow um, so you just sort of little round rounded brush strokes on the upper part of the berry And you don't want to go right to the edge. Um, because it'll look weird. Hi, who's Dr. Cranny? I don't know everybody's Twitch handles yet. Yes, and Quen, you are my early period gal. I, you can. Oh, hi! Welcome to my to my dining room. <laughs> um, yeah, Quen, you're my early period girl. If I have an early scroll, you get it because I don't want them. <laughs> so yeah, painting along, excellent. Good to have you here. Um, okay, let's see here. Okay, so we've got the highlight on those uh, with your little liner brush and your medium. We can do the shadow on the bottom of the three lower berries. Am I still there? Okay, I'm still there. Uh, so it's just, it's not quite halfway. It's like a little tiny fingernail moon on just the edge of your lower berries. There's that. And while you've got your little bitty brush, bleed the edge, you know, feather the edge of your, your upper berry highlight just a bit and break it up if you didn't you know, because we don't want, we don't want solid lines. We want feathers. We want softness, even though it's a, a round, possibly hard fruit. 
the shadow is still going to be, and the shading will be more subtle and fuzzy edged. I think I need to go. And you can go back to the light paint and pull down this way if you've gone fuzzy and just kind of play with it, go back and forth. There will be a moment when you go, oh, that's what it's supposed to look like. I get it now. Uh, it takes a little while sometimes. Um, hard to explain otherwise. But there will be an aha moment. Yes. Oh, yeah. And you can, this is gouache. Um, so it is uh, re-wettable and you can totally wet blend. Um, if we're trying to recreate more what was done in period, they had egg tempera and there was no wet blending because once it was dry, it was dry, you were done. Um, so that's where your, your line, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Hatching, hatch, hatch, hash mark, hash shading. There we go. Anyway, little lines back and forth. <laughs> um, you'll see a lot of that, you know, cross hatching uh, in the in the real period stuff because you can't blend dry paint. It doesn't work. Um, so there we are. Base colors all in, shadows all in, and now magic with your white paint or PH Martin, whichever you have or prefer. I've got gouache now just because it's little and quick and I'm not doing long lines of white work. So starting with the berries because we're already here. Six hours, what are we doing? Okay. Um, get your outline again and Here's where we add the white um, highlight on the small berries. You don't want to do it in the same way we did the light pink on the bigger ones because it will be it'll be a white blob and that's a bit much. So just a few little round rounded lines. Don't want to do it exactly the same on all of them because again we have natural entities here um, and same idea on your others you're basically highlighting the highlight on your upper fruit doesn't take much. I might be losing a little bit of paint on my brush. That's not too bad. So, nice little round. Nice little round berries. You can kind of mush it a little with a slightly wet brush to kind of tone down the brightness on some of it. Just kind of move it around. There we go. Highlight. Um, and then on the flowers, it's just line work uh, for your highlights. around the outside of the petals. And a little bit of highlight on the inside because it is a nice little curved. You know, flower petals are often almost cup-shaped. Um, so you want to 
emphasize that. Um, do you break up the darker pink edges on the lighter berries? No, um, it's not really, it's, it's a more defined edge uh, in the source. You can, you can fade it a little bit, but you don't want to, again, you don't want to blend it too much. Oh, and I forgot, I forgot a red. Um, there's, there's going to be a, a darker red edge on the bottom half of all the, the darker berries, which we'll go back to here shortly. Um, but it's the, it's a shadow on the, on the lower half of that fruit. Um, and since it is a round, shiny object, the shadow is going to be a little bit more defined than the, um, what, what the, what the lighter spot of pink on the top half is, is sort of, it's a, it's a spotlight, but it fades, it'll fade down into, uh, the curve of the berry. Whereas your, your darker pink edge, it's kind of a, it's a more defined, this is where the berry stops. So that's why you wouldn't necessarily blend that. Um, I'll just do a few white lines in here. Few white lines in there, and there's that. And then we'll go up to the upper flower, which has this weird curly edged petal that I love. A little bit of a wrinkle up here, and this is where you're. You can kind of. Looking at that, you can sort of choose where your your edge is going to be, and we'll go back with the medium blue now that we put the curl in, and give that a little shadow on the upper side because it's got its own neat little wibbliness, as it were. It wibbles. one little thing in there. So now we're on cleanup work before we put the shadow in, which will be the fun part. Uh, so what did I say? Medium blue with your little brush. And just sort of, it's a, it's an outline of the outline. Just a very subtle indicator that, yep, there's a curve here. The petal's done weird things. There's that. Uh, now the red. Go to your solid red. And here's where my paintbrush blorped before on the test piece, so we'll see what happens here. Um, your lower shadow on your dark berries. You don't want it to be a big piece, but you do want it to be, and you want to make sure you can see that there's something there. Lovely thin lines are lovely, but you got to have some substance in there. Whoop, and there I go, all over my background. And then on the lower, actually I think on all the the darker blue. And here's where the geranium kind of comes in and makes magic. I go directly over the blue, and I don't know how well you can see this on the video, but it's kind of turning purpley. Because of the lovely translucent nature of geranium paint. Use it to your advantage. Yes, we're popping. It's great. <sighs> yeah, I usually, there's a point where everything looks terrible and then I add white work and it's perfect. There. 
So we need, so you can either use your background color for this or squeeze out the tiniest little bit of yellow ochre. And I'm actually going to use my palette from the other day because I don't want to squeeze out more little tiny bits of yellow ochre. For the center of your flower on the bottom. Which has a lovely little yellow center with a red dot around it. Or in it rather. No, oh, a little bit of blorp. That's okay. And I do the centers of flowers last because that's what makes the flower done. And they're also on top of everything else. Um, you know, if you have better brush control and a steadier hand than I do sometimes, you can, you know, go right up against the edge and uh, nobody can tell what color you painted first or second or last or stuff like that. Um, I try to paint bottom to top uh, just because you can tell, you know, what color gets laid over the other color. Um, yellow, of course, goes down first because you can't paint over anything with yellow. Uh, you'll see through it. It's a pain in the butt. Um, but there we are. I wish I could see all your stuff because I bet it looks awesome. So yeah, when we're done, everybody has to post things because I want to see your art. So we've got highlights. We've got base colors. We've got shadows. Uh, question, is the petal on the bottom not outlined for a reason? Nope, I just forgot. So we'll get that done. Very good. Good catch. Uh, let's see what it looks like in the source. Yep, I got distracted. So it needs a petal uh, highlight here. And a darker blue with the red over it. There. A little bit of that. Okay. There, all done. Um, so yeah, unless somebody sees something else that I've neglected, I think we're good. We'll wait for the center of the flower to dry. But while we're doing that, did you, if you haven't mixed a little bit of uh, burnt umber in with your second little well of background color do so and make sure we've got good shadow color your ocd kicked in that's okay thank you um, if you find a mistake on the exemplar do you fix it on yours or go buy the exemplar um it depends what you call a mistake um the period scribes and monks were human, and like I just did there, I am sure they forgot things. Um, for an award scroll or, or something, you know, like this, a bookmark little project, I would probably, I would, I would fix it. I would make it look right. Um, you know, if I am doing a forgery, uh, like Thera did, uh, her calligraphy uh, forgery, the papal bull, which was amazing. Um, if there was a mistake in that, and I was, you know, if, if, if I was trying to recreate something exactly, I would, I would put the mistake in. Because um, there it is. Uh, 
Um, but if it's for an award scroll and it's obvious, you know, they outlined every single other petal and skipped that one, I'm going to outline that one. Um, oh, good night, Kara. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, every leaf has white detail on it, except that one. I'm, I'm going to put the detail on. So, you know, we, we have a modern eye. It's, it's just, we're modern people. So certain things, um, look weird and sometimes it's off-putting. And if I'm going to be staring at this scroll on my wall for, you know, hopefully a long time or, or the recipient is, um, you know, we want it to be something that they're not going to look at every time and go, Oh God, that thing in the upper left hand corner, that just looks so bad. And why did they do it that way? You know, you want it to, you want people to be happy when they have your artwork on your wall, their wall. Um, I'm rambling and yes, yeah, you were recreating, not copying. Eh, sometimes we're copying. Um, yes, there, I think I rambled enough on that. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're on the shadows, which are the tricky part. Um, but it's gonna make it all come together and be magnificent. Uh, so here's where you know, really paying attention to the exemplar will help. Um, you know, this assumes that you've done everything. Um, shadows, yes, shadows, terrifying. Um, you know, as, as close as you can, you can pretty much copy the shadow right over. But darker shadows belong to items that are closer to the page. The further away the item is, like the berries, the lighter the shadow is going to be. Um, so, you know, the, the flowers, the stem is resting on the page here, so that's where your shadow is going to start. Um, and then in, the petals are probably resting. Um, it's hard to tell in, in the exemplar, it kind of looks like there's a, a muddy shadow part to the left of the, or to the, to the lower half of the forget-me-not. Um, but starting at the top where the shadow starts, we'll just do a lovely little line like so. Like I said, the advantage to doing the shadows first you know, immediately after you've done the uh, background is that if you jog the brush, you don't have to paint over. Um, oh, bye Gwen, thank you. And then the flower came off the page, exactly. Um, yeah, if you jog the brush, then you have to do some, some illumination repair, which is a pain sometimes, but just don't jog the brush, right? So. There's that, and we'll put this flower off the page too up here. So there's your little leaf coming off to the side of the stem. Here comes the stem, up like so. And the flower shadow is sort of this nebulous blob. They just sort of do blob things like that. And that's all going to dry very dark, so. We can come in while it's still wet, and here's where we cheat because it's gouache and not tempera. Come in with your background color, mush it on top, and then wet your brush and sort of blend them together. And you should have a medium tone shadow at the top there, we'll see once it dries. And then come back and you can do, you know, swooshy things like this and just sort of highlight like so. So there's that flower now floating off the page. 
And now the berries and the vine there. So the vine is touching down at this end. And it'll sort of come and swoop like so, and it'll go behind the fruit. And I'm looking at the source to the left here. I don't know if people can see the tablet, but it's there. Uh, and then that kind of comes down like that, following the vine. And the vine sort of swoops around here like that. And comes up from the bottom and matches in like so. And then we have a berry and another berry with a little stem and a berry here with a stem that will attach right about there and a berry here and I need more paint and the stem kind of comes in like this and where are we there's a fruit here with a little stem attaching like so and this big guy down here comes out and kind of attaches like that there and two left. Let's see. And I just covered the berry with the shadow, so we'll come back in with some red and fix that. But there we are. With all of our lovely fruits and shadows and bright lights and highlights and now that berry's round again, so that's nice. And I think that does it. We could go back and do a second little dot. I'm not sure why it's like that in the source with the little dot because it's a shadow, but one extra layer of paint. And there we go. Hopefully everybody's less scared of late period illumination. Um, it's not quite as paint by number as, say, Bar and IVR or some of the early period. Not to say that early period is at all easy, because it's not. It's a whole different kind of brain exercise. Um, oh, we forgot our little red dot. There's a little red dot that goes in the middle of the forget-me-not. Now that our yellow ochre is dry. There. Now we're done. Unless Edmund finds something else. If you look in the shadows, it's very Ah, uh, yes. Physics. We know physics. 
So there we go, guys. Oh, the original source, too. If we got the lining tool back out, we could do this. They've got a red edge. I keep finding things, and I didn't put this on my one on Tuesday. So we'll see how steady my hand is. For short jaunts, we're good. There. And there's a lighter ochre edge on the left hand side, but I don't have any ochre in sufficient quantities or wetness mixed. Right, so this is the third time I've said we're done, but now I think we are actually done. Um, so you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for joining me in my uh, living room, uh, dining room, and um, yeah, we'll, we'll get to uh, do this again if uh, we're still all stuck where we can't see each other in person. Um, yay. Post your stuff to either your page or comment on mine, uh, my post somewhere or discord. Um, you should all be able to still get into the discord. I think Twig has set that up, so he's nodding. Um, yeah, post to discord, post to the Facebook, um, uh, Malagentia Scriptorium, comment on mine, post on yours. This is kind of fun. <laughs> um, recommendations or suggestions on what to do for next time. I think we'll try uh, the black hours, um, unless somebody has something they think might be more fun, but yay. Uh, yeah, this is great. Everybody have a wonderful night and um, we'll see you again in cyberspace and hopefully in real life soon. So, signing off. Bye.